Time to do a Pennsylvania garden tour. My long ass driveway. Here's my garden. So just pulled all the beets. We had tons of beets. They loved it here. Nice big basil plant that we keep picking from, but we have a few of those. And this was mini bok choy. <laughs> First time growing it. I had no idea that mini bok choy, only supposed to get this big, happens in a couple days and I missed it during the week when I was working. So come out on the weekend and they were already overgrown and getting flowers. And now I've got tons of pods. So that's okay. I will grow them again. I've got tons of pods to do it with. So that was the bok choy. This was radishes on this side and they love it in here too, but uh, way overgrown. I don't eat radishes. I grew them for Joshua flowering so we'll get some seeds from them and I'll grow some more and this monstrous thing it's a couple of them is the Chinese amaranth Chinese spinach and it is delicious so I'm gonna be pulling these off and you just let it grow and it grows it's about four foot high right now in the bed um, and you just keep pulling off leaves and letting it keep grow and so it won't bolt like spinach I have the worst time with spinach so I learned to grow the perpetual spinach but I also want to try this one because it's so beautiful I think what I'm gonna do is incorporate it in my landscape so I'll just have it growing here and there and I won't have to keep it in in the garden and take up space but I wanted to try it for the first time and see what we thought of it and it is good it is very good definitely a must try if you haven't tried it yet and then we have the jungle, as I call it. This is the sweet beets. They're big white beets. As you can see, they're quite big. Um, they're good. I mean, they're sweet. They're definitely sweeter than the regular red beets. The leaves are delicious. I love the leaves. I would grow them just for the leaves. Um, and But the beet itself, I still prefer the Detroit red. Um, because it's just got a wonderful flavor. This has got less of a beet flavor and just more of a sweet flavor. So um, you might like that. Got uh, lots of kale going here. Nice and healthy. And in between the kale, we've got some. Oh, they're on the other side. Oh, here's one. So that's a rutabaga. It's a yellow rutabaga. Navajo, I think it's called. And of course, we've got some more basil going to flower because it's so hot. I just pull off the flowers and throw them in the other beds because they keep away the bugs. There's a nice rutabaga. And of course, we got onions interspersed everywhere, but they're not doing so great in this heat. They're not liking it. The Black Magic Kale, very good. I love this kale too. I'm going to grow that every year. I have, this is the third year in a row I've grown that lots of lettuce as beautiful as it is you can't eat it i mean josh is eating it because he's not picky but it's bitter to me um it's just too hot to grow lettuce the peas are doing fantastic um i don't know if you can see there's a lot of pods on there right now that just came out but I, you see the bungee cord <laughs> Even though they were entwined in this, they grew so heavy with the peas of this last harvest that they fell over as a wall. So Josh helped me bungee it back up again. Um, and that's, so I just pulled all those off. They're just very heavy. I just, because I don't come out during the week as much um, to harvest, they get big and they have a lot of weight. Yes, this is the, this is the green bean wall um probably had more plants in there than i needed with that little bit of a, a space but um i've gotten some green beans i had two contender bean bush beans down at the bottom that i just harvested those were in the basket too um and the pole beans are just getting ready to come out they've got some flowers so i'll have those soon 
But I think what I'm going to have to do is, because they're still looking for places to go, um, I think I'm going to have to take another piece of this, this fence that I used and maybe make a top and come down in a curve to this, maybe. Um, and then they'll let them go this way and along the fence. I, I, I should have known better, but I always get so excited. And This is my perpetual spinach. As you can see, I just harvested it, so it's all cut off, um, but growing back nicely like it always does. Got another basil plant stuck in there because I've got them everywhere. And lots of dill. Lots of dill. It's going to flower, but I'm going to make dilly beans with the flowers. So they'll go to some use. And uh, you can never have enough dill. I put it in everything. Now these are interesting. These are sort of a um, broccoli rob, sort of. You're supposed to harvest the stems, but it's been so hot they kind of almost immediately go to flower. Uh, so I'm waiting. Hopefully I'm going to just keep them alive and hopefully as we're having less hot days I'll be able to harvest that and it's just supposed to have shoots all over it of the you know little broccolis And yeah massive one plant one one basil plant and So of course let's take a flower and throw it in with a That is our sweet potatoes Obviously, these are challenged. These are not. Um, Bonato, but I can't remember the name. I've got it written down. They're the red Caribbean sweet potatoes. These are the regular Georgia Jet orange sweet potatoes, the kind you're used to buying in the store. And they've not liked it quite as much as the Caribbean, probably because of this heat. But I'll just keep watering it. And we'll, we'll get some. Somehow I ended up with a volunteer potato plant in here. Probably because last year I threw out my buckets of dirt from the potatoes and they ended up getting put back in here when I added some more this year. This plant is huge. It was one plant. I can tell you it was one plant and it's just spread right out. So hopefully we got some nice potatoes under there. And of course these beautiful flowers you're seeing are zinnias. I like zinnias in the garden because they just spread and they, they do really well. They love growing with other plants. And I didn't plan to have this color. They're not very colorful. I'd like more colorful to bring the bees and the pollinators in, but that's okay. And this is one of those that I was talking about. It's like a, it's, the name of it is not broccoli rob, but it's like a broccoli rob. These were all supposed to be stems that I could cut off. And, and with these, supposedly the whole thing is tender. So you eat the whole stem and the little sprout at the top but this like i said they go right to flower so i'll at least have seeds um that's the end of this bed we're back to the beans so that's the first part of the garden hopefully i'm not making y'all dizzy that's the first part of the garden and then we have our little bridge yes this is going to be next year i'll have this gravel down i just had enough with the garden this year of building it. I don't even want to talk about my carrots. I'm so mad about these carrots. I got a few carrots, but this this method did not work at all. I'm going back to my method, which is, believe it or not, toilet paper with the seeds and little dots of flour and a little bit of dirt on top, and then they grow and they sprout. This was supposed, the, the cardboard was supposed to help keep the moisture so that they would sprout and because it would keep more moisture it did the complete opposite maybe because it's been so hot but it just dries out immediately in the morning so it's just making them drier than they normally would have been so i'm not having great luck um so i, I tried putting a shade cloth on it because to keep it from drying out as quickly and that has helped but no i'm 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 not happy about the the carrots <laughs> So I'll do it the regular way next time. Just an overview of the second part of the garden, the back half. Okay, so the carrots and then we've got, well, let's go to this one. So we've got watermelon and we have a little baby watermelon down here somewhere. I can't, oh, there it is. 
you know, little baby watermelon. So we'll definitely have watermelon, at least one. Uh, I've got two kinds, and then we've got a cantaloupe, which has got so many flowers on it. We are definitely going to have cantaloupe, but I guess I understand I have to cut them all off, except for two that might be growing, two or three, or else it's too much, and then they don't get big. So I'll be doing that, but only one plant of that. And of course, we've got the delicata squash, two of those, which I just... I'm grow, I grow every year because it's my favorite squash, winter squash. It's sweet. It's so good. And we got a little experiment of a bunch of corn. And I couldn't tell you what kind it is because it wasn't labeled. It was a six-pack at Lowe's. <laughs> so uh, I said, well, let me just stick it in here. and we'll, I'll probably have to manually pollinate it because it's such a small bunch. But whatever. We'll see. It was on sale. <laughs> all right and so we've got two of these which are identical kinds of beds with peppers in the front and tomatoes along the back and boy have we got tomatoes they have definitely taken off I didn't think I had tomatoes yet um, but I definitely have tomatoes and let's see we've got some nice ones back here so we've got lots of tomatoes. They're doing well, they like it. And my peppers are doing fantastic. They love it, very healthy. So, yeah, I've got mostly, let's see, we've got um, mostly the sweet type of pepper. This is um, called Etuda. There's like six of those. Uh, we have we have one habanero right here. We have down here we've got um, California Wonders. I've got four California Wonders. Oh, and all these tomatoes and those are Romas. They're the Amish paste. They are the best Roma I've ever had. They grow huge. They grow plentiful and they're just fantastic so i don't grow any other tomatoes beefsteak or otherwise because you can slice those too um but except for on the end here i have one isis tomato and i have one cherry sweet sweetie which is a lot of cherry tomatoes um on those so those are cherry tomatoes and the isis is a cherry tomato too but it's a little smaller and it's supposed to be a little sweeter so we'll see what those two do everything else is the amish paste and then we've got these are okay here's why they tell you if you buy something in the store and you try to grow it from seed you likely won't get what you think you're getting because it's a lot of times hybrid well i get the mini sweets those are those little peppers in the package that are the different colors and they're sweet like sweet peppers and i just munch on those for snacks so i said oh let me grow some so i saved some seeds and i grew them and and this is what we got <laughs> so that's not the mini sweet peppers so it's part of the hybrid that they were so we'll see what they are I, I mean they'll they'll have to be a sweet pepper of some sort they kind of look like um what is that one jimmy something or other but we'll see it's really big and there's there is a lot starting um so i've got four of those and then i've got Let's see. Oh, these two. These two are a hot pepper. Daytil, D-A-T-I-L. Those are a very hot pepper. Very hot. It's for my son. I don't eat hot peppers. Um, and then we have two natapinos. So they're not jalapenos. They're natapinos. No heat. I love jalapenos and cowboy candy. I like making cowboy candy. But it's too hot for me. I'm sorry. I'm a wuss. So these are natapinos, which is the same flavor. No heat. And then we have, oh, Cubanelles. So these are all Cubanelles. They're loving it here. They're very, very healthy. Um, those are another one of my son's favorites, medium heat. And then, of course, you got all those Amish paste tomatoes behind it at the end. Yeah, that's not grass. It's corn. <laughs> Apparently doesn't like the heat at all. But I'll give it some good watering tonight. It keeps coming back. I mean, it, it just does this during the day when it's really hot. Um, this is another corn. And believe it or not, there's 90 
in each bed. I know people don't normally grow them so close and they don't normally grow them as a little bunch, but I'm giving it a shot and I'm giving it extra food every week to make sure it's got enough to feed itself. And we'll just see. I might have planted it too close. I probably did, but we'll see. I want corn and I want lots of it. So hopefully between these two, that's 180. Maybe I'll get a, 100 ears of corn. Who knows? And now the back row. This is all of the potatoes. So hopefully I'll have sacks of potatoes to put in my basement because it stays nice and cool all year round. And then we've got the Canabac. Now, right now, I had just have them on the, their soil and then the potatoes and then a layer of hay. And they're growing up through the hay. And now I have to go, I have a pile of sand. I'm going to put a layer, probably a good inch layer of sand on top of that to keep the light from coming through on the tomato, uh, potatoes. And um, I'm feeding them also. This is Lost the Tag. This is Red Norland. And then we've got Russet Burbank. I like, gotta have a Russet Potato. Love Russet Potatoes. This is a Lehigh, it's, uh, it's a yellow one. It's a yellow uh, potato. Then you've got your Yukon Gold. Favorites of everybody, just them out. Those yellow, nice yellow, thin skinned potatoes. I'll see what you find in the store. Oh, another one the tag came off. I gotta put some clips on this. And this is the red red gold, which is Yukon, it's the pink version of Yukon Gold. So all doing well. And that's my garden. So yes, there's a bridge that my son built because there's an actual ditch there. Which I'm just gonna fill it all in and make it level with gravel. And that's it. Hope all your gardens are going well, well too.